I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind. I looked yeah. over there and I thought, is anyone else seeing this? And everyone else was acting, everyone was in on it. Well, I know Rachel and I would both share moments of how ridiculous uh, it felt in such a blissful way, whether we were performing or, uh, you know, the most exotic of locations performing Volcano Man in a lava field, just everything was beautifully surreal. You always get the junket question of, were there a lot of pranks on set? And I, I never do any of that stuff. And this was the one movie I tried to pull a prank. We were shooting in Scotland and we're shooting on the street corner and I'm like, Rachel, don't look up right now, but I believe there's a ghost in that window. And there was a woman just looking perfectly still out the window with this like huge head of hair and dark sunglasses and not moving and just staring. Rachel was like, oh my gosh, that scared me. Oh, that's so weird. That's so weird. And I go, I know. A couple days later, I had uh, my makeup artist uh, stage herself dressed exactly like that woman. <laughs> and we tried to get Rachel's attention to look over there and it kind of freaked her out. She's like, that was weird. I'm kind of freaked out. And then I, I couldn't hold the secret any longer. And immediately told her, don't worry about it. It was all a joke. I was losing my mind. I was losing my mind. I looked yeah. over there and I thought, is anyone else seeing this? And everyone else was acting. Everyone was in on it. And everyone was like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. That's, she looks lost. And I was like, she looks lost. She looks like the lady from the other day in the window. Why is everyone acting so weird? And I went up to Will and I said, Will, did you see that? Do you know? And then I, and then I sort of, then my, my brain finally caught up and I was like, um, unless someone just dressed up like, <laughs> and you were like, it was me. It was me. I did it. I did I, it. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. Well, I think when you're in the world of Will Fowl's uh, cinematic uh, hilarity, every day is a fun day. He's a very generous performer. He's a very generous man. He's easy to be in the company of. And also, I'm a huge fan of Will Ferrell movies. Uh, so when they invited me on board this film, uh, Eurovision, to play his father, it was an easy yes. I read it in the morning, and I said yes by lunchtime. I grew up on the Eurovision Song Contest. I was very familiar with that world. I watched ABBA win in 1974 when I was a, an acting student. I got to go back to London and to travel with my wife there, uh, Keeley. And so we had a great time in London, seeing my mom and seeing friends and hanging out and making the movie and then going to Edinburgh, Scotland and playing at St. Andrews and then to go to, to Iceland. Uh, which was just just a delight to sit in beautiful thermal spas, to wander in this landscape that was quite unique. What are you doing? I just want my ding dong to look bigger than what is really there. Smart. Yeah. I could do a camel. Do a classic camel. It's never out of style. Yeah. It's always so weird because at first, <laughs> At first, you're laughing initially that we're actually executing this thing that was just a part of the stage description in the script. And then you forget about it. And then you start laughing at the fact that we've forgotten about it. Uh, so <laughs> right. It, it, it kind of has waves to it. David, um had uh, me take vocal lessons with an amazing uh, vocal coach. I mean, he does, I mean, I felt so honored to be taught by him. I never, you know, in real life would that happen. He's like Bette Midler and Ariana Grande's main guy. And for a month or two beforehand, I went and, and did lessons with him a couple times a week and learned all the songs. And quite smartly, David wanted me to sing everything um, live while we were shooting it so that I didn't look like I was lip syncing at all. And then he took bits and pieces of, of my performances and um, sort of blended them with Molly Sangren's performance, um, who's this amazing Swedish singer who has a very similar timbre to mine, which David found. So, um, so it was this kind of very interesting new collaborative thing for me to experience and, and so fun to get to kind of be a pop star. <laughs>
you know, it was very exciting. I mean, we were we were lucky enough to kind of be working with the best of the best in terms of the the producers and songwriters, and uh, and I think it was really fun for them to get to kind of dip their toe into the world of writing songs for Eurovision. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, for a brief moment in time, I think Rachel and I both felt like uh, pop stars, which was great. Well, first of all, th th this is the first I've heard of it, really, in the last day or so. But I think it has the legs to, to be a trilogy. I think it has. We've come this far. I think a trifecta would be rather good. I'd certainly uh, it would enjoy and look forward to going back into the, that world. I think everyone else would. I'm certainly open to it. Judy knows how to find me. And uh, the fathers will come back as grandfathers. And what would I like to sing? Well, that's a good question. Uh, maybe have another crack at SOS. No, uh, <laughs> I don't know. But it's, it's it, you know, Mamma Mia, it, it just sits there on the shelf, bookends, uh, uh, beautiful films, and films that will be, you know, passed on from generation to generation and to be part of something that is that loved and has a cinematic shelf life. That's, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. I love singing. I'm a natural born singer. I mean, I think that's evident with the, with, with my two films there, Mamma Mia. Uh, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Singing. What a challenge that is. Well, I did get a platinum album out of it and I got a gold album out of it. So singing is tricky. I do enjoy it. I mean, it's, there's, there's nothing like trying to sing and attempting to sing or just singing. Uh, I should do more of it. Uh, I, 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 I've heard many, many reports on my singing. I remember in London and uh, we were all gathered. There was Merrill and Colin and Stellan and we were all in the green room and the newspapers were there and there was a photograph of Merrill and myself. And I thought, oh, that's a nice photograph. And I started reading and I don't read reviews. I try not to read reviews and I, I, anyway, it started out, it was really glorious review. And then it said, Pierce Brosnan couldn't hold a note if it had the queen's head on it. <laughs> and uh, for some reason that just, I thought that was rather, rather humorous. Uh, and it did go on to compliment me for my, my, my grace and courage. But uh, I did ask him if I could sing a song in this, but it fell on deaf ears. So the world is safe. You don't have to endure Brosnan singing. I think it was ABBA <laughs> because it's the only one that I remember. I remember ABBA coming out in these outrageous costumes, singing this song, which was very obscure. And they are really the only act that I remember. It was 1974. I was at drama school. That's that's what I remember. I remember Dana. She won it, young, young Irish lass. It was, yeah. I mean, that was. I, I thought that was a good nod at the beginning of it. I thought, hmm, someone's uh, pulled a fast one here. Why not? <laughs> 